I'll show it then. Hello, this is Dwayne Escobedo with the United States Sports Academy. Um, I'm here today with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Woolsey. Um, he is the chair of our sports um, studies program. Uh, Dr. Conrad Woolsey, uh, besides being a certified sports psychologist, yes. is, is also done a lot of research on uh, energy drinks and their impact on performance. And uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that today. Uh, Dr. Woolsey, you know, just kind of set it up for us. What, um, you know, kind of what have you studied so far and what are some of the things that you're that you're finding in these various studies? Well, the most recent study was done on pilots and we um, tested energy drinks in a NASA flight simulator. Um, in that study, uh, we found that uh, when pilots use energy drinks, even though they perceive they're performing better, uh, their perceptions of their performance in relation to the measurements by the simulator didn't match up. Uh, for example, um, pilots, um, while they reacted quicker uh, to a maneuver, let's say a complex turn, they weren't as accurate. And um, they didn't return to what's called, it's called straight and level flight, where they have to maintain uh, their altitude, airspeed and heading all at the same time. And when you fly, um, you have you have to look at the horizon, uh, your instruments, your hands are doing one thing and your feet are doing another. For example, the foot pedals, if there's a crosswind, you let's say there's a right crosswind, you hit the left foot pedal and that would uh, steer the, the plane to counterbalance you. Uh, so while Certain indicators, such as reaction time, are faster, which um, in other studies they said that energy drinks enhance performance. Mm -hmm. Well, um, quicker reaction time is not necessarily a better performance when you look at an overall skill. Mm -hmm. um, and so, especially with skills that involve coordination, sequencing of movements, and um, uh, or timing is really important. We found that uh, there could be a, reduce in, a re reduction in performance from energy drinks. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the most recent study. Right. And uh, you, I understand you presented that at the um, American Sports Medicine Conference yeah, recently. Yeah, the uh, American College of Sports Medicine Conference just last week. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Ward Edwards uh, did that with me. And um, he also was there with me, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a pretty exciting deal. Um, and we have future studies with the uh, Naval Aerospace Medical Institute, and uh, Tom Thomas Sather, Lieutenant Commander Sather, mm -hmm. um, at the Navy base in Pensacola that we'll be doing in the near, near future. Talk a little bit about that because I know it's led to some things already, and like you said, you're going to do. Uh, you hope to do more studies. Um, talk a little bit about that. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, well, the future studies, uh, uh, Lieutenant Commander Sather is going to be doing his dissertation on the topic, but also um, uh, there's other nutritional supplements that we'll likely examine as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the new aeromedical uh, reference and waiver guide was just approved yesterday and that's now published online today. Um, and, and that sets the uh, policies for nutritional supplements uh, and energy drinks for all aviators in the, in the military for the U.S. Mm -hmm. So then that's, that's a pretty big document. Uh, I was going to say, that's kind of a just big deal. Approved today, yeah, <laughs> or just approved yesterday. Um, and I'm a co-author on that with Lieutenant Commander Sather as well. So big stuff with the Navy that we're doing here and um, what kind of things do you feel like need to be looked at in the future or, or that you hope you guys hope to study in the future well the results of the preliminary study with pilots needs to be further validated and, and um, you know, that study was on uh, pilots in regular 
aircraft, not like a jet fighter or, you know, something that's even more complex. Um, Wasn't the Blue Angels. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, essentially there, there's several studies out there, probably 50 over the last you know, eight years or so, that, that said that energy drinks enhance performance. So there needs to be further studies um, to help athletes make that decision not to use the energy drinks. Uh, energy drinks have come under more scrutiny uh, nationally. I mean, this is what the seven billion, eight billion dollar industry. But um, there has been questions about, you know, is it healthy and that sort of thing. Uh, if if uh, you're an athlete right now, what kind of uh, advice do you give? I know you need for future studies, but you know, um, you know, what do you see or what do you tell people when you talk to them? Well, I think that the energy drinks can be enticing and I see why people use them. I see all this marketing and, and uh, a lot of people perceive there's benefits and a lot of times whenever you think something's going to help you, it actually will just because you think it will. Um, but in a performance setting, particularly when the pressure is on you, uh, energy drinks are most likely not going to enhance performance. And in many situations, uh, as a certified sports psychology consultant, a lot of the athletes I work with are baseball players, um, uh, college level, even some professional baseball players. And a lot of the baseball players think that energy drinks will increase their reaction time mm -hmm. in hitting. Um, I did another study that was in 2010 with uh, Ben Strack. He's with a company called, or he his own company called Pro Baseball, and it's in California. And he did studies with hitters, and um, on energy drinks, hitters swinging more bad pitches. Oh, really? So um, you know, being able to react quicker is not necessarily make you a better hitter. Uh, and so it's explaining things like that to the, the baseball players that it's the pitch selection. And when the, when they're on energy drinks, you know, if you're more amped up, um, you're more likely to swing a bad pitch. Um, or, um, you know, the pitch selection is going to be the most important thing. So in practicing, there's a thing in, in sports psychology called the zone of optimal performance. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Whenever you – like one thing that happens to hitters, whenever uh, they go up to the plate, their body automatically picks up. It's called arousal level is the name of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's how activated are you. Well, in a practice setting or where something doesn't matter, someone's arousal level is low. So the energy drink might help their performance because it brings them up to where it would be in an actual performance setting or it's something – like it matters yeah. all of a sudden. Well, when the hitter in the game, even if they practice with the energy drink, say, oh, man, I was so much better with the energy drink, they're going to have that extra arousal in the game that they didn't have in practice. So now all of a sudden it's too much, mm -hmm. and it throws them out of their zone. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, so that's one of those things that... You want to stay in that optimal zone. Well, it's just teaching people that your body is going to naturally respond under the stress because um, that's the biggest thing, like in this last study even, the biggest decrements in performance were in the emergency scenarios. And that's whenever the pilots all of a sudden had to respond to a, a naturally stressful event. Mm -hmm. So that throws up their, their arousal level higher, so now they have to uh, calm themselves down in order to react. Uh, you know, and and the systematic procedures they have to go through and, uh, you know, it took them an average of 12 seconds longer to complete the emergency checklist when they're on the energy drinks, um, wow. which 12 seconds when you're going 500 mile an hour, it's quite a bit. Right, right. That's potentially dangerous. Mm -hmm. So, um, also just wondered, uh, you can't be very popular with the energy drink industry doing the research you're doing, but... but you know, why are you committed to it? Well, it started with um, helping to protect the, the kids. Because, you know, right now, an um, 11-year-old kid can go into a convenience store and buy 
Monster or NOS or whatever energy drink is there. Um, and, you know, there have been deaths and seizures, strokes, heart attacks, all those kind of things. Um, and also, um, you know, with the college students mixing alcohol and energy drinks, that's how this whole idea started. Uh, I used to, uh, I bartended for three years <laughs> in college. And, Previous uh, life. And, and <clears throat> I didn't even drink back then, and I noticed, man, people are drinking Red Bull vodka like crazy. Um, and I think it, it, you know, I don't think it's picked up. That was kind of the craze. It was when it was brand new. Uh, and everybody was, that was the new big thing was Red Bull Vodka, but we were selling more of that than anything else. Mm. And I said, you know, I have to study this. So that was uh, 2005, I decided to do my dissertation on that and uh, did one of the first studies ever on um, combining alcohol and energy drinks. Uh, that's how it all started. Mm. But it really goes down to, um, you know, we just had an article in the Digest about regulation. I've been pushing for regulations of energy drinks since 2008 mm. and mainly for the age limit to be, you know, I think you should have to be at least 16 if not 18, but I'd say 16 is probably more reasonable for our current laws and things in the U.S. in terms of, um, you know, I know that a lot of laws are 18, but I don't think you want to clump energy drinks in with cigarettes and things like that, but uh, some of the drinks out there are as bad, you know, like Red Line, Spike, and interestingly, though, those are sold in stores like Walmart mm. or Smoothie King. Mm -hmm. um, so some, Smoothie some, King, yeah, Smoothie King has <laughs> has uh, Red Line. So not to give them any bad press or anything, <laughs> but uh, and I think that they have, they might do something where they don't sell those to people under a certain age, right? But um, and as as I know. last question, I mean, what, just what do you think, uh, where do you see the future of this whole issue going? I know it's a hot topic, you know, currently in, in sports and, and like you said, pi you know, the pilots, uh, places where your physical performance really matters. Mm -hmm. and where do you see this uh, hot topic going? Well, um, this summer I'm actually doing a TV show with, uh, it's an Australian uh, ABC tele science television show named Catalyst is the name of the show. And um, that show is going to be directed towards uh, getting regulations on energy drinks in Australia. And also we'll probably do some shooting at the Navy base to show the experimental research. Um, so in the future I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we do get some, some more regulations and uh, I'd really like to see the classification of energy drinks change from nutrition, right now it's nutritional supplements <laughs> instead of, you know, so they, they don't, it's not under FDA regulation because there's a, there was a law in 1994 that said nutritional supplements are not regulated. Uh, but if a product is sold and marketed as a drink, and it's like, there, there, there is laws for canned beverages. But energy drinks are not considered canned beverages, or or sealed, you know, bottled beverages. Those all have laws in the United States. Mm -hmm. But energy drinks are not regulated by those same laws. Mm -hmm. So they're able to market and sell the product as a drink, a canned drink, but they're not regulated the same. So it's a little bit of an interesting uh, paradigm there, where they don't really. You know, it's big money essentially. It's a six billion dollar industry. So they have enough money to kind of grease the wheel to make sure that law stays like it is. Right. Um, but, you know, I just think at the bare minimum for the starting of it, it should be, you know, a parent when they're buying something, you know, at a gas station or whatnot for their kid, if it said nutritional supplement, um, which really doesn't have much nutrition to it, but, you know, supplement, they, they think of it differently than a drink. That makes sense. Hmm. Right, right. So, well, Dr. Wolsey, thanks for coming on today and sharing uh, some of the knowledge that you have on this. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you.